Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, welcome to this latest installment of the Innovation Forum at First Caribbean. Today, we're going to focus on how banks, bankers, and banking are changing this for the for the better going forward. It's really a forward-leaning um, discussion today. I am my name is George, and I'll be your moderator. And I'm honored to to be on this panel with um, with our distinguished um, panelists. Um, we have Mark St. Hill, who is Managing Director of All Retail Operations, um, Isan Peters, Managing Director of Technology and Operations, and Ms. Donna Wellington, Managing Director for the Barbados and Eastern Caribbean. I want to do a special um, shout out for all of the um, participants, all of our customers and, and friends who have joined this webinar from all across the, um, the, the, the islands and the Caribbean, and indeed across the world. I know several people are dialing in from um, across the diaspora. So um, this evening, um, uh, first of all, we, before we get going, I, I'm going to in, introduce all of us. Um, as I said before, my name is George, I'm George Thomas. And, um, my role at FCIB, I am the Deputy Chief Information Officer at the bank, and I am focused primarily on technology delivery. Uh, what does that mean? It means um, project management, enterprise architecture, change management, data, the data sciences, and digital, the, the thing you have in your hand. And um, one of my most recent focus points is digital transformation, how we transform in the di new digital economy, which is, you know, really accelerated given the pandemic and the various um, vicissitudes that we're all enduring um, in these historic times. Um, this give you a little bit of my background. I'm a career technologist. Yes, I'm a propeller head. I've been in technology um, for uh, about 30 years, 20, over 20 of which I've been at the senior level. I uh, started my career um, here in Barbados with um, what you now know as Flow. It was, back, back then it was Barbados External Telecommunications. I've worked in the dot-com space, um, the management consulting and technology consulting space. Um, was I joined the bank, my first interaction with the bank, um, uh, as an employee was at, towards the end of the merger um, that formulated First Caribbean. And um, I've worked on internet, mobile payments, um, a plethora of things. Um, in more recent times, I, I took a sabbatical off and I was working with a FinTech off in the, um, in the Middle East and Africa. So um, from my, I've, I've seen um, a wide range of things. And this is really synonymous. All of our panelists, we have different career journeys, but all of us are very tightly focused on banking and delivering excellence to our clients. So what you're going to hear today in this panel discussion is not going to be supposition or guesstimates. It's going to be actually what we live every day, 365 days a year from our different vantage points in, um, in, in banking. So as I move forward, um, let's, let's, um, I just want to kind of lay out the, the, housekeeping, the housekeeping rules. Um, we're going to cover, as I said previously, how banks, bankers and banking are changing for the better. And we're going to invite you to use the Q&A um, to ask your questions. Please feel free. Um, all questions are good questions, so please jump right in. Um, we're we going to be monitoring QA for questions, so, so don't post questions in the chat. Use the Q&A, please. Um, we're going to be making this um, session recording available in the, over the next 48 hours, so look out for that. And we, we really want your, your feedback. Part, part of our ethos as an institution is continuous improvement, and we have our client as the center of our universe. So we want your feedback. Um, so as we continue to do these webinars, we want to continuously make them better and better. Um, okay, so um, as I'm moving on, I want to introduce uh, my colleague and, and, and friend and full disclosure, we were classmates at Common Mayor Mark St. Hill, Mr. Mark St. Hill. Um, he, Mark has been in banking for over 30 years. Um, he has been responsible for the development and growth 
of CIBC First Caribbean's retail and business banking operations across the 16 um, countries of our ambit. Um, he has worked in almost every area of banking. So he brings that um, on the ground knowledge developed over a long period of time to give a perspective on where we've come from and where we're going. Um, Mark also has worked in several countries such as Grenada, British Virgin Islands and Barbados and across sectors like insurance, retail banking, corporate banking, credit risk, international banking and wealth management. Um, a banker with significant breadth. Mark is a fellow of the British Institute of Charter Secretaries and Administrators, a graduate of the First Caribbean Executive Leadership Program with um, Wharton Business School, and recently successfully completed a master's certificate program in financial services leadership in conjunction with the Schulich School of Business and CIBC. Welcome, Mark. Next up, Next up, we have um, Mr. Isan Peters, who is the Chief Information Officer and Managing Director of Technology and Operations. Um, uh, full disclosure, Isan is my boss. But I'm going to say good things about him because they're all true, not because I'm, 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 I'm bidding for, for a promotion or, 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 um, or a good bonus. But um, in all seriousness, Isan has worked in the tech business and financial services industries for over 20 years. He's held progressively senior roles in the offshore software um, business sector. Um, he, like myself, he's experienced that, has that dot-com experience, and he's worked on development of technology trading platforms, investment, and portfolio management. I, I'll tell you one thing, um, and Isan, because he's, he's such a humble gentleman, he is brains wrapped in a package of humility. And I'll, I'll say one other thing he probably doesn't want me to say. Isan graduated with first class honors in math and computer science in the shortest possible time it's possible to do that, which is less than three years. So that's another tidbit. So um, I'm really honored to, to work with, with Isan. And um, you, again, getting a very sharp, keen um, understanding of banking and finances. Isan also has worked in finance itself, hardcore finance. So you're getting a lot of experience there with Isan. Welcome, Isan. Next up, last but certainly not least, is um, Ms. Donna Wellington. Donna joined FCIB in 05, 2005, and she'd been working in the financial services industry prior to that for 15 years at companies such as Sagicor, ENY, Caribbean, and PwC. Um, in 2013, she, adopt, uh, she was appointed to her current role as managing director. And her focus is across the Eastern Caribbean and Barbados primarily. And in this position, Donna has been responsible for revenue generation and regulatory matters across all key segments of banking operations in seven countries um, across the EC and Barbados. So um, Donna's 32 years in the business and her focus at present is transformation of the payments ecosystem using best in class digital payments channels to assist with the wider transformation agenda of Barbados and the Eastern Caribbean. Donna also lends her experience to her peers across the other um, jurisdictions, the other um, 14 jurisdictions in which we, um, sorry, 10 jurisdictions in which we operate. So welcome, Donna. So at this stage, I, I want to reach out to everyone. Can you jump on our Q&A and let us know which country you're joining from, please? I want to, ah, Trinidad and Tobago, shout out to TNT. Welcome. Um, Cayman Islands, shout out to Cayman Islands. Barbados in the house. Um, we have Jamaica in the house, welcome. We have Grenada, we have Canada, welcome. Ah, oh, welcome um, Bahamas, welcome to Colombia, and welcome to Antigua and Barbuda. 
and welcome all of you who have taken the time to, um, to log in. Welcome St. Lucia. The US, Virgin, US Via St. Kitts, welcome. Like I said, the diaspora is well represented. Okay. Um, I see some familiar faces from the diaspora. Welcome, St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Welcome all. So um, as I move on, I hope I have not missed anyone. Um, uh, welcome Curacao and, and the Dutch Antilles, St. Martin, uh, Aruba, uh, US Virgin Islands, and um, Turks and Caicos Islands. Welcome all. Now, next up, um, you know, we, we like our demographic information. Um, which device do you prefer? Can you drop that in, your, in the, um, the Q&A, please? Actually, we've popped up a poll for you, so please click iOS or Android. I'm gonna, full disclosure, my preferred device is the BlackBerry. I know that dates me, and I'll tell you, my BlackBerry died <laughs> in the ash a couple of weeks ago, but I have both both um, iOS and Android, so I, I, I work with everything in all seriousness. So please um, participate in our poll, tell us what you're joining on. Ah, Android has it at 68% so far. Interesting. And what do we do with this, this information? It helps us as we create custom experiences on our digital platform. So rest assured, this information is not just a frivolous question. Um, we, we, we use these, these kinds of polls to help us shape or our digital platform. So now um, I'm going to, without any further ado, I'm going to jump straight into, into the, um, the meat, um, the panel discussion section. And um, the first topic I'm going to put out there is, and I'm going to direct it to Mark. Um, how are banks helping with financial inclusion? Mark, um, given, and, and, and I'm, I'm positioning this with you because, because of the panoramic view you've had of the regional banking um, situation over the past 30 years, you, you, you've seen banking from the days when a ledger was actually a book down to <laughs> now when you know, almost everything is in the cloud, right? Um, Regulatory approved, of course, for those regulators that are on. <laughs> um, can you, how are banks helping with financial inclusion, Mark? Okay, so first, let me thank everyone. Um, it's really a pleasure to be here. Uh, before I answer the question directly, um, the transformation of what we call traditional banking um, is occurring at a rapid pace. So in the last few years, extremely fast. But this will continue at an even more accelerated pace because of two significant factors. And this is where we will speak to the financial inclusion. It's a change in client expectation. So clients are demanding instant access um, and more informed. Um, they're more informed of the available technologies that there, that there is not only here, are in the region, but globally. And we are actively working to align all of our products and services with our client needs. So kind of some, some examples there. Clients no longer um, are willing to wait for an appointment to, um, to access products and services. From the time they have a need, they're expecting to start that process or to um, acquire that. It is important that if we don't provide that, that, that immediate need, they will get it elsewhere. Because financial inclusion is very important because um, traditional banking really is, is, is a thing of the past. And we talk about digital banking, but Banking takes many forms. Banking is, yes, the traditional banks are the big banks that we know about. 
but then we get into the corporates. Um, there are corporates that have now lending arms. They have the fintechs. Um, uh, you have the leasing companies. There is an array of access of financial services. And we cannot see ourselves as um, just um, keeping ourselves in that ecosystem and, and not, and not um, linking ourselves with other players. So the digital banking or the transformation we are seeing, customers in access to their information, the way they, they, they interact, um, that data is accessible by all. And we have to be able to, um, to be able to transfer, we have to be, be able to link with other sources and meet the client needs head on. To the last point, I also made a significant factor of why this transformation is required and financial inclusion. I mentioned about um, other fintechs and, and things like that. This is about competition. So if we do not give clients full access to their information and the transferable of that information and access to their services and needs, they will, there will be other entrants to the market that will provide same. So two big factors that drives all this and the importance for it, why traditional banking has, has really moved is, is changing client needs and competition. So I'm very happy to be here because this is very critical for, for um, the new way. Um, and I should say, you know, I want to move away from talking about digital banking, but banking for the future. Thank you, Mark. So Donna, this is an area that you're very passionate about. So can you give us your perspective on, um, on financial inclusion and how the banks are supporting it? Thank you and good evening, everyone. Uh, we just recognize that a rising tide floats all the boats. Um, and so it's, it's really important um, for all of us in the system to transform, not just our bank. And so we're seeking to leave nobody behind, um, but also to lead the charge in transformation um, so that we are the, the face of next generation technology, but we need to bring the whole system along in order for us to, to truly get the um, get the full, the full benefit of, of everyone being able to, to tap into the financial system. Okay, thank you, Donna. And Isan, can you give us the technology and operational perspective on this? Yeah, thank you, George. And good afternoon to the panel and to those joining us across the region. Um, my perspective is that the digital inclusion um, for us as a bank is um, uh, financial inclusion is key to this digital journey that we are on. Uh, what we have seen um, over the last little while and, and, and in general is that more and more our clients are demanding um, the access to certain uh, products and services on their own terms. And we as a bank must offer them those options that they can transact and, and interact and engage with us on their terms. And we see, you know, the whole um, digital uh, evolution that we are on will get us there. Um, there are a couple of points in terms of what I see as key is going to be um, digital literacy, obviously. And this, these kinds of forums that we are hosting helps with that. And digital literacy from the perspective of we, we need to um, educate and, and make aware, and make our clients aware of what we are offering and how easy it is um, to do it um, in, in the new age. So. The, tradi the traditional banking will always be there. We'll, we'll always, you know, there'll always be a branch somewhere for you to access. But there's also a recognition that as we, you know, move forward into to the brave uh, 20, 21st century, that you will be able to access banking um, from your mobile device. You'll be able to access banking from your, your computer or your tablet. And we have to ensure that we make it as easy and as seamless as possible for our clients to be able to do this. Um, while well, simultaneously ensuring that we leave, we leave no clients behind. So it's going to be key that, you know, for all demographics we serve from the, you know, the Gen Z and the millennials straight um, through to, to, to the seniors in our population, that everyone can access banking on, on their terms. Thank you, Isan. And sticking on this topic, but I'm going to a specific aspect. Um, I want to put it out there, the topic of cryptocurrency. 
I know it's very topical, and um, especially with the huge upswings. And, you know, when, when a certain car manufacturer made a statement that there was a, a bit of a downswing and so on, a lot of, a lot of alpha in that space, a lot of people are interested. Um, I want to put it up to the panel in general. Um, what, 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 are, what are your thoughts on the cryptocurrency and the role that banks would play with regards to cryptocurrencies? So I don't, I don't know, well, maybe I'll, I'll start to say, um, we are watching the space very closely. Um, it's new, it's really new um, to the region. And certainly it's something that we want to, um, we want to, to, to work at the same pace really as our regulatory framework allows. Um, it is very important for us as, as, as um, the folks who are responsible basically for as commercial banks to um, help safeguard the, the, the financial industry um, from a monetary perspective to truly understand how this is going to be impacting us. It's not just in the ups, the upswings, but we have to plan for the upswings and the downswings. And we want to make sure that clients are protected in both, in both situations and that where we have uh, a situation uh, especially in places like Barbados, where we have foreign exchange controlled jurisdictions that we are very mindful of how these things impact um, our jurisdiction. So we are watching very closely um, to see uh, certainly what our regulators say, um, because we certainly don't want to run ahead of them. We want to run beside them in this regard. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Um, Mark, um, do, do, do you, do you want to um, talk to us a bit about your, your posture on digital, digital transformation? Can you say a few words on that, please? Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm laughing because you say a few, a few words. Um, <laughs> uh, as, as I mentioned, um, one of the great things, one of the great advantages of technology, and I'm just going back and dating myself, we now have real-time um, real feeds of what our clients want and what our clients are expecting of a bank. Um, and, you know, the social media, um, myself and Isan, we are tied to social media 24 hours a day. Isan says me the good, the bad, the ugly, um, it could be two in the morning, we get it real, real time. But what it is telling us is that our, as I said, clients are, are expecting that what they consider straightforward, simple and easy, accessible, they want it um, at, the, at, the, uh, at, the, um, at the comfort of their homes, at the comfort of their phone, and they want it very simplified. And we are taking the approach that it is not only what we call the obvious product and services, but anything that creates friction for the customer, the digital transformation will look at for our customers. So even as simple, well, not really as simple, but even if um, um, a client has a dispute on their credit card or, or their the debit card, um, this is something that requires a form to be completed and they travel to the bank, it's lodged and it's investigated. We, we are in the process of digitizing that, that through their mobile app, it will go directly into our core systems and the investigation will, will start. Um, we, we, at any point where the client, and, and, and I come from the background of aligning ourselves to the customer journey. So whether you are a, um, getting a job for the first, first time, can be time your employer says, okay, you, you are hired, you need to get a bank account. We don't expect for you to have that turmoil of having to set an, an appointment, um, fill up forms, then wait a week and all of that. You start the process immediately. Um, and again, one of the buzzwords that we use within our bank is removing the friction for the customer. So this, this transformation is that anything that the client should have the ability to access um, and to start that process 
Um, that is how we are going to be transforming the bank. Um, Isan, on a very important point, I don't want our audience to think that we are going to be a virtual bank. Um, we firmly believe in the omni-channel approach and that's a fancy word to mean that there are many ways to access our banking services. So we will still have hub branches. Uh, we will still have our call centers, our mobile, our ABMs. However, we would expect that depending on the complexity of a transaction, that would be handled more within the branch. But anything that's not complex, we are going to go to digitize such. And that's what our transformation is about. And it's very important that we do that. But the second point that I made earlier, it is very important for our own survival. Um, as I said, um, a bank compared to other financial houses that can just lend money, we also have to take care of our the, all of the clients um, that have funds with us. So we, we, have to, we have to make sure that we provide that in a secure manner, but also in a cost-effective one so that we can also focus on what drives our revenues and that is in terms of lending. Um, not to let anything out the bag, I think our CIO is best um, placed to talk about that, but we are going to be doing some very exciting things even on, on the lending side with the advent of credit bureaus and all of that. Um, lending will become very much um, at the tip of um, your finger, and um, but I will I, I will say no more there. I will leave that for our chief information officer. So, um, Isan, if if you if you're going to take that ball, I'd also like you to, to talk a bit about you and Mark to talk about the central bank digital currencies, and I want Donna to weigh in on that as well. So, um, let's start if if you if you're going to. Catch the ball from Mark and then talk about CBDCs. So, so, so I think Mark is setting me up there a bit. Um, so <laughs> we obviously have a number of um, transformation um, projects and, and programs on, on the go. Um, if one thing um, COVID has taught us is, is that um, digital is, is the way the world is moving. And even this forum that we're doing, normally stuff like this, you can do town halls or press conferences and other areas of you know, getting the message out. But more and more, it's virtual meetings and, and the like. So in terms of where we're going, as Mark said, we're really looking to digitize um, the, the client journeys. Um, so everything from opening a new account to um, you know, selling a, a, a credit product, um, a credit card, a loan, um, et cetera. Those will all be digitized to the extent that the clients can do them. Um, from the comfort um, of their homes. It cannot, however, be done in a vacuum. So there's certain infrastructure, and, and this is where the, you know, it, it comes to me as CIO, there's certain infrastructure that we have to put in place to be able to support it. Um, it goes all the way from, you know, will, will the regulators allow it? You know, can we do stuff like uh, electronic signatures rather than having folks come to the branch to sign for documents? Um, can we allow you to, you know, a, a, upload your, your identification documents to us? How do we secure those documents and ensure you know, the privacy and confidentiality of the information you share with us online? So it, it, it does take a bit of work to ensure that we have all of these mechanisms in place so that we can offer these um, services um, to all of our clients. And Mark mentioned a key part of this, which is all around trust. I think more than the, the, the money in our vaults, what customers, um, get out of banks is that trust. They trust us with their savings. They trust us with their, their transactions. You know, you want to send a million dollars from here to anywhere in the world, you come to your bank. You will not, you know, go to the you know neighbor next door or anything like that. So it is it is a, a trusting we take that 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 client trust or, or customer trust very seriously. And it at times makes it makes us a little more um, conservative in how we approach um, certain topics. So as, as Mark said, we, we are looking to digitize uh, many, many journeys. You know, we've digitized some already. So, you know, there, there's, there's the um, client onboarding. You can open a new account online. You can, uh, you know, deposit your cash and checks at the ABMs. Those things we're all rolling out. Um, those are the, in the past and we're not rolling them out, but there's stuff that we're now uh, developing. 
And in terms of your next question, I know this is, this is near and dear to Donna's heart, so I will pass the, I'll pass the mantle to her around our central bank uh, digital currency. So, so Donna, over to you. Sure, thanks, Isan. Where we're really seeing a, a ground swell um, in this space is, is really on two fronts, uh, and they're, they're very much connected. Um, one is in digital currencies, where our central banks are, are getting very involved, and we have at least two of our, um, our currencies um, within the bank that are, are, are getting there. We have um, the DXC in, in the Eastern Caribbean, as well as the sand dollar in Bahamas. Um, what is really behind this is, is really, again, where we started, which is the financial inclusion and the interoperability of um, the payment system space. We want people to be able to really um, but underbanked or banked um, to be able to access the payment system. Um, and what's important here is that we allow that to happen and, and we embrace the, the new entrants and we allow everybody to play in that space. But there are two ways to digitize, if you will. Um, you can have a digital currency or you can just digitize, digitize all of your transactions so that they, they happen digitally. Um, even if they aren't, if we don't have, to, we don't have to actually create another um, digital currency to do that. Um, once uh, we offer um, cash optional ways of doing things where um, people are able to operate on their phones or, or otherwise on their, on their watches, whatever it is, um, and they don't actually have to use or just transfer on the internet um, um, to, 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 to pay other people. We don't actually have to have a, another currency to do that. We can just digitize. So there are some territories where that is the desired approach and, and we are supporting in both instances. We are working with those who want to, to use digital currencies and we're also working to, to digitize transactions so that we, we, um, you know, we get there anyway. Um, both of them are seeking to, to do cash optional ways of doing business and, and we're supporting both. Thanks a lot, Donna. Mark, you want to weigh in on this one? You know, I just want to um, echo what Donna has said, but I also just want to just make that clear distinction between um, cryptocurrency and digitizing of um, a currency. Sovereign fiat. And, and um, I, I think it is something that we are um, we are generally um, very su supportive of, um, and bringing it down into very basic terms, just think about the costs um, central banks um, have to print notes and mint coins. Um, even when you look at the Eastern Caribbean, um, they have to move money between the islands, between vaults. Um, that means that they have to get guards to go on planes. It's very costly. So this reduces the expenses within the central bank. It also reduces costs within, with, within the system. And we talked about earlier financial inclusion. So um, th th this also allows for more financial inclusion um, because there are, uh, with minimum KYC requirements, we can now get into digital wallets. Um, so again, uh, it's not only the banks, but the, the, the entire financial and monetary system is looking to become more efficient and more, more intertwined. So it's something that we, we are looking forward to um, because uh, people see cash as just as, uh, a, a simple note and, 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 and coin, but it's actually a very expensive undertaking to manage the cash within a system. Thank you very much, Mark. So I have one question I'm gonna, and it's really, um, Isan, I'm gonna pass the token to you. Um, how will our clients interact with the bank in the future? And more specifically, how will the bank protect customer information in this, um, in this um, brave new world? Thank you, George. So I get the easy questions, I see. All right, so how will the, the, the clients interact with banks in the future? Um, clients will interact with banks in the future however they choose to interact, I, I, is how we view it here. Um, what we are doing is, however, offering a lot more self-service options to clients. So we live in a 24-7 world. 
banks traditionally are open eight to five, Monday to Friday um, kind of scenario, but that's not how the world um, you know, operates. So we are in recognizing that we are looking to as much as possible, push as many of our services to self-service and push them to online, uh, mobile and uh, via the ATM and, and our, our contact centers. Um, a shout out here to the contact center team who do a fantastic job 24 seven operating. But yeah, but we're, we're looking more and more to make sure that we, we um, enable or digitize our, 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 our processes, digitize our transactions such that clients can interact with us when they, they want to and how they want to, if I were to put it that way. They have, they have the bank in the palm of the hand if they so desire, or they can go to a branch if, if they, you know, the, the transaction is a little more complex or they, they want to go to the branch um, to, to, to conduct, conduct that transaction. So I would, I would be more looking at it as you know, almost like the, I don't know if this is a word, but the Amazonification of banking is, is, is where we're headed. Um, so um, that is how I see um, clients interacting with the banks in the future. You, you, you choose which channel you want to. And it, we're building it in such a, a, a way that you can transition between channels. So you can start it online and finish it in the branch. Um, so all of that has to be key. So we need you know, to have that data around how have you interacted with us? And when, were, when did you last interact with us? And what would you like you know, your next interaction to be about? So it is both you know, client-led journeys and will also be journeys based on where you are in life. So depending on what we know about the client and what the client need might be, the bank will, will, will at times reach out to say, you know, um, we, we realize that you, you might be in need of, a, you know, started a new college or whatever, you might need a, a student loan, et cetera. So those kinds of interactions are, are how we see um, banking of the future um, moving forward. The other thing I see banking of the future um, to, to to us, for us to enable is speed and execution. Clients will want their banking um, needs real time. So Donna would have mentioned the CBDCs, um, central bank digital currencies and what we're doing there. It's all, gonna, it's all gonna be about how quickly can you execute a transaction. So we do need real time payment rails. We do need, you know, you, you send um, a, a transfer from um, one um, SDIB account to another. In today's world that happens real time. You send a transfer from, from an FCIB account to a domestic competitor, it does not necessarily happen in real time, except for our uh, businesses in Aruba, where they have a real time rail. So we need to ensure that we have the infrastructure across the region to ensure that you, know, you can initiate payments. And payments tend to be a heavy um, number of transactions that clients do. You want to pay your you know, you want to pay for your, your food, you want to um, pay your gardener, you, you want to um, send funds to your kids, et cetera. It, it all has to be real time. So I, I do see the need for a real time rail in how we operate. And the final thing I think that I, I, I see in banking in the future is going to be the whole ubiquitousness of the digital identity. We haven't mentioned it so far, but a lot of our regional governments, similar to how they're looking at central bank cash, they're also looking at um, the digital ID and how that will enable um, provision of services to our clients. So um, a shout out to, to all the regional um, governments. I know the government here in Barbados is doing a fantastic job in getting that up and running. I know Cayman has got um, efforts on the way of Jamaica. So we have been involved in all of those um, conversations and we've been working keenly um, with, with, our, with our regional stakeholders to see how quickly we can transition to that. And it opens up a whole different world when you have that, because once you have a digital ID, it, mean, it means that getting banking services is frictionless because we will know who you are instantly when you interact with us because the government will say this is A, B, and C and we will accept that as an electronic verification or an, or an, or an electronic authentication of you, the, you, the, you the client. So it, it's, it's all those things that um, we're working on to, to ensure that we can make it as seamlessly and easy as possible um, to ensure that we're able to, to provide these services to our clients. And your second question, sorry about um, all Carried away with that one, George. Passionate about, about ensuring we get that one then. And your second question was around. Yes, um, it was it was really around um, customer data. Um, yeah. How, how, how would we secure customer data? So, and and um, and just very quickly, a time check. We have another couple of minutes left um, because we really want to get to the Q and A and have our clients um things. So after yep. that, I will just open the floor. After your comment on PII, um, I'll, I'll open the floor to everyone to kind of weigh in on innovation, any particular points that you want to put forth before we open up the Q&A. 
no worries. Uh, I'll, I'll be very brief on this one. So um, a, a key um, aspect of, 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 of um, our role here at the bank is around the privacy and, and security um, and confidentiality of, of client information. So it, it, I wouldn't say it inhibits us, but it makes us very conscious and cautious of how we, we use client information. And that translates into how clients should be treating their information as well. So one of the hard cyber is obviously information in cybersecurity. And we see increasingly, um, you know, folks are, are, are getting hacked because of, um, you know, lapse controls of, of how, how and where they use their information. Um, we, we do quite a bit of cyber education and, and fraud education for all of our, our clients and, and for the extended um, public as well around, and this goes back to my, 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 my push for digit, more digital literacy. You need to be very aware and conscious as you use your, your data online, how you share your data, how you protect your data, because there are unscrupulous um, actors out there who are every day um, trying to hack into banks and trying to hack into your account. So we spend um, quite a significant investment around the protection um, for our clients, but it, it takes two hands to clap so we can protect your information as much as you know we, we can, you know, with, with as much um, um, investment and, and, and controls and software and everything else. But if you give away your, you know, your, your online banking user ID and password, or you use your, your Visa debit card or credit card on um, a, a shady or suspect website, where, where it's then used to exploit your account data, there's only so much we can do. So I will not, you know, miss this plug to say we need um, our clients to be very careful and be very conscious of how they use their information and be very aware that there, there are bad actors out there trying to access that information. And my final plug will be what we see across the region as well, goes back to the whole infrastructure question, is increasing focus on privacy of, of data. So quite a number of our jurisdictions are passing data privacy laws, which put um, you know, the onus on the bank to ensure that we have even more protections around um, client um, information. As we digitize, this will become more and more important and I can't stress enough um, the need um, for, for proper um, security and privacy. So with that, George, I'll get off my soapbox and turn it back over. All right, thank you. And, and um, Donna and, and Mark, yeah. last comment? Yeah, if okay. I, if I, I, I just wanna say two things. One about what Isan just said, but then um, uh, uh, one last um, comment on it. Um, the first thing I wanna say is we recognize that, you know, we will have to work with new entrants, um, that is going to be standard. But we also need new entrants to understand that there are gonna be some filters through which um, they must pass. And it's not just about how they treat to the front of the house with respect to payment systems and, and those sorts of things. Um, the back of the house, which is what Isan was talking about, is as critical um, when you're setting up um, a payment system. So it's not just important that it works, it's fast, but it also has to be safe. Uh, and, and certainly when you connect with us, if, there, if there's need to, um, it's gonna be very critical that, that we understand you know, that, that side of things and that that's working well. Um, and then the last thing is we want, at the end of the day, um, we recognize everybody needs to be connected. Um, payments is a huge part of that. Uh, we talked about a lot of other products as well, but everybody needs to be connected. And in order for the region to really have first world standards, um, we need first to make sure that people are operating real time um, in country, and then we're operating real time regionally. Um, and then we connect to, um, to the rest of the world in that same way. And then we would know that we have the, the right levels of connectivity and, and would have met the standards we all want to, to reach. Thank you, Donna. Mark? Hi, so re really keen to get to the q and I would just say what is very clear is that we are very passionate about our clients. We are very passionate about giving new, new um, bringing new technologies to our clients. However, we also recognize that we can't do this on our own and we are quite conscious that we operate within the ecosystem. So I'm also very proud to say um, that, you know, through yourself and e Isan and team, we are working with, with the governments. I think, I think we, um, we, you know, we are part of the Eastern Caribbean, the, the pilot. Um, I know we are a huge think tank 
for the government here and wherever we can, um, we are, our, our mandate is to, is to continue to assist um, because um, it, is, it is very important that all financial institutions continue to invest in technology. Um, Isa would have mentioned about the security but the ecosystem is as strong as the weakest link. So whilst we are very proud about what we are doing, we are also conscious um, that the entire ecosystem has to come along. So we are playing a role um, being also a think tank for others. And um, we, we are very proud um, and I'm very keen to take forward the agenda across the region. Thank you, Mark. Thanks, panel. So we have, a lot of, of um, this is vibrant response. Um, so I'm just gonna jump into Q&A now. And the first question I have um, is, how do you see the Omnis Channel strategy applied in the finance industry in the Caribbean? And also, how do you see the customer journey over the Omni Channel strategy? So Mark, I think you mentioned, I think it was it you or your Donna mentioned um, Omni Channel. So do you wanna take this one? Let me, let me go again. How do you see the omni-channel strategy applied in the financial services industry in the Caribbean? Uh, I'm not Mark, sure. Yeah, Mark, Mark is frozen. frozen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, so Don, Donna, you want to hear that one? Sure, sure. Just, just to say that um, we want our customers to, to be able to, to um, deal with us, as we've mentioned before, however they, they choose to. Um, if it is that they want to, to operate with us um, completely online, they should have those options. If they want to you know, see a, a person, they should have those options. Um, if they want to operate cash optionally, um, you know, they should be fully able to do that. And we want that they can do everything with us, um, be it, be it. Um, you know, we, we want our, our future thinking is, is even on the corporate side that, that folks can, um, can deal with us in, in that. Um, modality. So we want, you know, to be able to, to offer all of our products and services um, in whichever form our customer wants uh, and however they want to do it. We also are very cognizant of, of the elderly and we want to also support them and the differently able. And we, we also continue to support them in our branches when required, but, but we've been having um, consultations too with um, the differently abled even here in Barbados to make sure um, that we hear their concerns and where uh, we need to change um, how we how we um, interact with them, we do so so that everybody is brought along. Okay, thank you, Donna. Next question up is education. How are we going to educate our clients about the benefits of um, digital banking? And Isan, that kind of dovetails. You started on that and um, with the, the protect, data protection. Can you um, just? Spend a short amount of time on no that works. one. I, I can um, expand on this one. So um, the, the whole digital literacy um, is a big aspect of it. And what we saw recently with, right here in Barbados, for example, and I, I think um, somebody might have asked this question, we, we partnered with the, the National Library Service here to do some training for seniors around, you know, online and safe interaction with online and how they uh, do certain you know transactions etc. So we, we we have seen a high adoption um, in terms of of our online and mobile banking. But what we've also seen is that the same seniors that you know folks are asking about are some of the first to to adopt. So we do um, outreach. We also do in branch work. So we used to have a um, before COVID, but in a, in a post COVID world, we we're still working on this virtually. But we were having these um, sessions where once a month. A branch would run a campaign around um, encouraging clients to sign up and register for digital banking and you know walking them through the whole process and you know all you come in and, 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 and we would assist you. But we've also been doing outreach to the extent that we we have um, in, in my group, for example, we, we run every October, we need to do it more frequently, obviously, but every October we run a cybersecurity um, education and awareness. Um, program where we go to the, the, the primary and secondary schools and we distribute um, kits and, um, and, and learnings and readings, et cetera, around, you know, the need to, to, to practice um, 
being safe on, and secure online and, and what's involved in that for the kids. So we're trying to reach them early. And there, there are lots of other um, things that, that we're doing to, to reach out, but I would say that it is an area that we're working at and we will continue to work uh, at going forward. I've now challenged my team to find out how we can do a lot more virtually. Um, and, you know, so this webinar is, is an example of, of an awareness and my team has been doing some of this even before the session and they will continue to do so. So we, we, are, we and, and I see some of the other banks doing similar work. Um, so it, it's, it's all about how do we, um, you know, move the society forward together. So I, I, I do see the, the whole digital literacy thing as, as key to, to, to us moving um, our society forward. Thank you, Isan. Mark, you were? Hi, George. I just wanted to add, add there. Um, also, in the last year or so, we have now created a new role called Digital Champions. And they have been, um, they are within all of our branches. Um, unfortunately, under this COVID um, time, we have not been able to, um, we have not been able to um, have as many of what we call some pop-up shops but these digital champions are doing an excellent job in educating and converting clients and showing and showing them um, what 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 our research ha has has showed us is um, our clients of all demographics are very keen um, to adopt these new ways, but they just want someone to show them. Um, so the digital champions have been doing a, a really great job across across the network. And, and what I would add quickly on, on Mark's last point in terms of the digital champions, um, I would also like to do a shout out to the social media champions we have out there. So I'm surprised at times how clients are helping clients. So they, they know the products and services so well and can help a client you know, get set up on online and explain to them how you know to do certain transactions. So also um, I would like to say a big shout out to our, to our social media um, yes. for, <laughs> promoters out there. We don't pay them, but they do a fantastic job. So I have to, I have, to, I also have to echo that. Um, I'll give you a clear example. Um, we created a product about a year ago called First First Pay, and it was ready to allow persons to transfer monies between um, clients very, very in a very simple way. All that you need to know is the client's um, um, cell, cell number. And, and you put it in and you transfer the, this, this amount. Through social media, um, this product now has transformed as a payment system for micro and small businesses. And um, we really thank the social media for it. They really educated the public. And um, it's, just, it's just another um, example of how strong social media is, and we continue to listen and and, and to watch this space. Thank if you. I can. Okay, uh, well, well, Donna, just before you go, I um, just want to be mindful of time, so we have to kind of quicken our pace a little bit. I want to get through as many of these questions as possible. So go ahead, Donna. Yeah, I was I was going to answer one of the questions I'm seeing here on on the chat. Um, somebody's asking about the peer-to-peer -peer functioning, um, network functioning in Barbados. Um, in order for that to function, we have to get to real-time, um, um, a, a real-time system first. So watch this space. By the end of this year, um, we will be able to do real-time payments here in Barbados. And once we have real-time payments, we're going to be able to, to transact peer-to-peer, um, person-to-person, -peer, um, -person, if you will. Um, um, both, both within the commercial banks, but you will see other people coming up as well. There are going to be people innovating in the space, but we do need the rails that we need to do so, which is the real-time automatic clearing house to allow um, those payments to, to flow real-time. Yes, indeed. Now, Donna, as, um, one question I wanted you to take was, how are we including the elder generation in our transformation? Well, I, I, I thought I, I kind of mentioned that, but um, and I think Isan did as well, uh, just, just really helping to bring them along with respect to education. Um, we, we can no longer say that when people are of a certain age, they, they want to operate um, strictly in a branch. Um, I, have, I have persons that, um, that we certainly interact with and, and, and that wish to 
um, transact um, online and not to enter the branches at all. Um, so it really, we have to meet people where they are, uh, where, where people uh, are not willing to, to go there. Uh, we certainly support them in our branch networks all over the region. Uh, and when they want to do things online, we teach them how to be careful in order to be safe when they're doing the transactions. Yeah. I, would add, I would add there that um, I, I, I love the data and facts. And what I can confirm is the elderly um, is, not as, is not as scared as, as we think. The digital adoption is happening at a, at a very fast pace and they are adopting. And it goes back to, you, you just need to help them through the process. Um, but as Donna is saying, our omni-channel approach allows for the elderly to come into our channels um, and free of charge um, in many of the jurisdictions and get served. But they too are adopting. I, I actually think some of the elderly would be quite ashamed uh, being categorized as, as, as fearing this. Uh, they, they are laughing at some of us. They are quite intuitive and adopting these, um, these products and services. Okay, thank you, Mark. I've seen a couple of questions on KYC, and I'm just gonna kind of munch them together and ask, how are we dealing with KYC in this digital impersonal um, era? Uh, in the past, um, bank officers actually knew clients um, and they were intimate with them um, in terms of knowing them for over a period of time. So how now does how, how do, does the digital um, edifice or the digital mechanism know the customer and, and enforce KYC in this new age? So this is, is I know Isan, this is right up your street, but um, I want to go at it is that this is this is actually quite exciting. So let's get very granular what we are doing. So we're digitizing the information and um, we're, we're scanning the documents, we, we're storing this information. What it does is to allow us to pull information and actually find out more about our customers. As we, as we bring all of their data together, enabling technologies are allowing us to actually have um, um, stronger relationships with our clients. So let me give you a, 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 a clear example. Um, when we start to pull all this data, um, years when I joined the bank, I could just not pick up a name, George, and say, George, you are good for a credit card, you're good for X, Y, and Z. Through this process, we are now able to get a, a, a very complete picture very quickly of our clients. Um, um, I was actually speaking to my CEO today and we launched one of our first pre-approved campaigns using the AI and using uh, data analytics. And the adoption rate was the highest um, we have ever had um, than prior times when we had to mull through reams of paper, fax, call, find out more about you. So it, it, is, it actually allows us to get a better understanding and a complete understanding of our clients in a fraction of the time. Um, so that's another part that I'm very excited about and I hope I get another 10 years in the bank to see it. The evolution of artificial intelligence it is one of the most powerful tools that we can understand where a client lives, their spending patterns, what they like, what they don't like, where they like to shop, where they don't like to shop, um, you know, and, and, and allow us to actually drive a very bespoke relationship with our clients. So um, again, traditional banking, it took two, three weeks to do this um, with, um, in this new, new, new world within a touch of a click, we are able to get a better feel for our clients. And I, I just wanna add there that, you know, as, as we mentioned before, as our, countries are moving towards digital identification that allows us to tap into um, a one source and, and, and makes it frictionless for our client experience so that we understand who you are without having to go through the, the telephone bills and 
and all of these things that people are bringing to, you know, always are complaining about and the two forms of ID and everything. We're trying to get rid of, of all of those parts of the friction um, in the experience and make sure that we um, tap into those resources and, and make it seamless for all. Okay, great. Um, I know we are just about out of time, but there are two points that came through that I, I'd like uh, us to address quickly. One of them, I'm just going to put them out there quickly for the entire team, is one is how has the pandemic affected banking and change? what are the changes we're seeing? And the other one is, and it's, it's an interesting one, is will the digital ecosystem allow government greater access to bank and bank information and accounts? Which I think Isai would have addressed in PII um, peripherally, but um, this is an interesting topic. So I, I, I think it's something that we should lean in on. Those two points, please. So I'll, we, I'll take I'll take the first one. Um, we had a digital roadmap. We had this roadmap carved out for quite a while, and we started the execution. And we were having to bring our clients onto the journey slowly. What the pandemic has done overnight is put us back into catching up to our clients' expectations. Our clients overnight um, are saying, I'm not going back to tra the traditional ways. Um, whether there's a cure, whether there's a vaccination, whatever, um, I realize I am far more productive. I have more time to do what matters. And they are pushing us. Um, uh, and, and I have I have no secret. Uh, when they say that we are slow, um, they tell us. So, for example, we are now launching and rolling out smart ABMs across the region, and we high fried ourselves when we launched um, here. And social media roasted us and said, "We want more. You can't give me one at Warren's and have me waiting in line." to use that one, we want more. So we now have another one. And Isan, um, I understand you, you have put some more on a ship. So yeah, <laughs> just what, what, so just watch that fix, that, that um, space. Uh, so the long and short is the pandemic now, the clients are saying, thank you for accelerating, but, you, you, but we need to accelerate even faster. So we are, we are thankful to meet their expectations, um, we are sorry for one of the reasons for it, but that's how it goes. We also want to eliminate um, the, hard, the, the, the the long-standing items that we, you know, have been bugbears of the system for a long time. Um, the whole matter of checks and 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 people being people paying other people um, using the slowest way possible. Um, what the pandemic did was it, it forced people who didn't want to do that, um, corporates who didn't want to do that anymore, um, to pay um, their staff using digital means and, and, and payment, payment transfers. And, and that has been really helpful. And as we go along, you're gonna see even more ways to do that and, and watch this space with respect to, to those innovations as well. Thank you, Donna um, and, and Mark and Isan. We are now going to move to the next evolution, the next stage. And uh, we're gonna put a question out there. Um, there's, a, there's a $25 Amazon gift card at stake. And the question is, what is one way that banks are helping with financial inclusion? And the options are A, real-time payment systems, B, using more paper, and C, not having 24-hour service. So please respond in the Q&A. Include your name, email address, and your response, please. have the responses coming in. I believe we have a winner. Um, Giovanni Morgan is uh, the winner of the Amazon 
gift card. Um, I'm going to leave it to the production team to um, work out the um, logistics with, with Giovane. And the, and the answer was A. We have two more gift cards. And the second question is, what is digital currency? And the options are A, cash from an ATM, B, currency that is available only in digital or electronic form, and C, checks. So quick hands, vote. Let us know in the QA section, including your name, email address, and your response. Come on, guys, compete. Ah, I think we have a winner. Winner is Anthony Yearwood, and the correct answer was B, currency that is available only in digital or electronic form. Or I should say value that's available only in digital or electronic form. And the last one, last question for the giveaway of an Amazon $25 gift card is what method of security does the bank use to protect your information? And, the, and you're choosing from A, paper files and flash drives, B, unlimited amount of login attempts when accessing ABMs, online banking, and mobile app, or C, one-time verification code, um, which is called, in other words, for two-factor authentication and encryption, A, B, or C. Let us know in the Q&A, include name, email address, and your response. I think we have a winner, and the winner is... Hold on, I'm working with the production team. Gwendolyn Rosemond is the winner. The answer was C. Um, I, I saw there are others that responded, but you didn't include your email address. So that, um, I'm sorry. Okay, so that's it um, for this section. And at this stage, we are at the end of our presentation. We have so many questions. We're going to hold another session because we do want to to respond to everyone, but unfortunately, you know, we, we, we allocated one hour and uh, we've kind of gone over by 10 minutes. We thank you for participating and responding. We will be holding another se session um, in which we will um, bring these questions forward and seek to answer them as part of the agenda. So on behalf of the Innovation Forum at First Caribbean International Bank, uh, we thank you for attending our webinar. I want to um, thank you, our clients, our employees, um, our friends and family for participating. Um, I also want to, um, the Unsung Heroes, the, uh, the Innovation Forum um, persons here in the bank, um, group of young, vibrant, bright people who give up their time to volunteer um, to, to put this on as a platform for keeping the public or customers um, 
and employees informed on what's new and breaking in banking, in business, and in technology as a whole. So once again, uh, thank you. We do want to hear from you, so please take our survey, provide your feedback, rate our mobile app, and you'll be entered for a raffle to win another um, $25 Amazon gift card. Thank you very much. Have a good night, and please stay safe. Thank you.